Hi, my name is Steve, and today I'm going to take you through two projects showcasing why I really enjoy having a 3D printer, being able to create my own models, and create functional prints that I can use around my house. So let's get into it. So for this first 3D object, we're going to work on a microphone stand. So I have my microphone. I'm not using it right now, so hopefully the recording is okay through this session. I bought a sound barrier for the microphone. So your microphone goes in here, protects it, blocks out all the ambient sound around it. But with the microphone I have, the kit did not come with a mount for this particular microphone. So what we're going to do is take a elbow mount, which goes onto here. I'll have a screw that I'm going to have to create a object to hold that in place. And then I'm just going to have this mounted in between. And I'm going to take a couple of magnets that are going to stick to the base. And that will allow me to slide this back and forth, attach and not necessarily have to get too complicated uh, with trying to figure out a lot of different things within the objects. So the first thing we want to do is take measurements. We want to go through, we want to get the measurement uh, using some calipers. We're going to get a measurement of our uh, actual microphone. I've got the cord on the bottom that I have to account for. I've got the bolt that's going to attach to the mount. Want to get the dimensions of this metal bar and really get everything written down so that we know before we get into the 3D modeling what we're going to create. So we'll start out simply by using primitive objects, some Boolean features, and the chamfer tool. So pretty simple 3D modeling uh, tools. First thing we want to do is create the representation of the microphone. And that's simply a couple of cylinders uh, put together with a chamfer tool. Then we're going to put a couple of boxes together to represent the 45 degree angle USB connection. We'll combine those and then use another cylinder tool to represent the cord. Once we have all of that, we'll align it with the microphone to put it in the proper location. Next we'll create the metal bracket that is part of the uh, isolation booth. We're going to do again some more primitive objects, some boxes. I'll do a box and a cylinder and combine those and then we will boolean subtract that and that will represent the metal bracket that we're going to have to put uh, together for the magnets. So next we'll create just a basic cylinder that represents the magnet. We'll align everything together so that we can see how this all looks. Ensure everything is placed properly over the metal bracket as well as uh, at the correct height to fit centered within the sound booth area. Then we'll create additional cylinders to represent the 90 degree uh, mount that we'll put on the back of the microphone. So this will be the swivel mount. We'll create the bolt again using some cylinders and the chamfer tool to represent that. Position everything properly. Uh, and then we're going to create a couple of boxes that we will use to actually represent the 3D printed part. So everything we've done so far has been related to creating all the parts and pieces that we already have. Now we'll start creating the actual 3D model. Again, primitive objects using the box tool, positioning everything uh, in alignment with the existing parts. 
combining them with the Boolean tool. Once we have everything put together, we then use a Boolean tool to start subtracting all of the existing parts and pieces. So we will subtract the magnets, we'll subtract uh, the box that will represent where the cord will need to slide in and out, and then we will subtract where the bolt needs to fit in. And then you have your final object ready to put on the 3D printer. So now that we have all of our parts and pieces, we're going to take and take our 3D printed model. I'm going to glue in the magnets. You want to make sure when you're doing the magnets to make sure which side you need to put the glue on so you don't have them the opposite direction. So I've marked those super glue to glue them into place. We've got our bolt that's going to go through the center, come out through the top, that's going to attach to the mounting point, the swivel mount, the cord will go right through the middle and that's going to attach and go on. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to glue the magnets into place. That's why you mark the right side. As soon as you drop it, you forget which side. Both are in. And there you go, nice magnetic mount. I can move it wherever I want to within there. It's got the height, I can still rotate it. Nice, quick and easy way to do that. So another great use of the 3D printer. So for our second project, we're gonna take a look at trying to add some LED lighting for a backdrop when I'm doing my YouTube videos, as well as being able to use the lights to light my 3D printing area and help out. So I want something that I can put under for accent lights, but also use as functional lights and the ability to switch between the two. So what I have is just an LED light strip. Uh, these are a USB light strip that I can change the colors. Uh, and so what I wanna do is put this under these rods so that they'll be hidden when I'm doing my YouTube video, but I can rotate them to the outside so that they can shine the light on the 3D print area. So we're gonna take, do our measurements of the wooden dowels, do the measurements of our LED lights, and we're gonna go create the model. This should be a very simple object, quick and easy to create. We'll start with a cylinder, that's going to represent the dowel. Then we'll create a second cylinder, making it larger and setting the width for how large we want the size of the ring or the clip to actually be. So we will then create a box. This will represent the LED light strip. We'll position this on top of the clip We'll create another box and this will be part of the clip. This will be what holds the LED light strip in place. So we're going to want to position the LED light model with the box so that it is just enough to hold the rounded edges but does not cover the entire LED light strip. Now we're going to create a box and this will be used to remove part of the 
clip so we don't want this to completely be a ring that you have to slide over the end of the dowel. I want this to be able to be pushed onto it as a clip and so we're going to remove part of the actual model so that there's an open end to slide over the dowel. Then you use some boolean tools in which you can combine the objects as well as subtract the LED light strip and have everything combined together. So now that we have our 3D model printed out, I did end up making two variations of the model. So the first one I made uh, has uh, less of an opening. It goes all the way around the dowel, so there's just a slight opening, but it had a little bit of play. It, it, while it swivels, it doesn't hold as tight, so I decided to make a slight adjustment in which I really just moved down the opening so that it really only fits about halfway up the dowel. And this kept more tension on the clip and it holds it in place much better. I have my LED light and I printed multiples of these clips so I can simply take Clip that in so it will hold the LED light. It doesn't interfere with the lights themselves, so it really doesn't matter where it's positioned. It won't affect the actual lighting. But now when I put enough of these along the way, it's going to hold that into place. I can rotate it to the outside so that the light is shining on a 3D printer. I can rotate it behind so that now it's just an accent light and not as visible to the camera. So we'll do a couple of different shots to see what that looks like.